The Albertosaurus, in my opinion, is one of the coolest tyrannosaurs, which deserves way more recognition. It was first discovered in 1884 from an outcrop in the Horseshoe Canyon Formation in Alberta by the famous geologist Joseph Bert Tyrell. Due to the lack of equipment, only an almost complete skull could be partially secured. Later down the line in 1889, Tyrell's colleague Thomas Kesmer found an incomplete smaller skull at the location nearby. These two skulls were assigned to the pre existing species Lelaps by Edward Drinker Cope in 1892. In the year 1905, the two skulls were relocked over, and it was soon discovered both fossils were actually greatly different, with one of them being called Dryptops and the other being named officially as Albertosaurus sacrophagus. In 1910, the American paleontologist Baron Brown discovered the remains of a large group of Albertosaurus at a dry island bone bed. Because of the large number of bones and the limited time available, Brown's party couldn't collect every specimen there, but instead they decided to collect some of the remains from all of the individuals that they could identify in the bone bed. Later in 1997, the dig site was rediscovered and field work for the site was resumed. Over the excavation from 1997 to 2005, a staggering 13 more individuals of various ages were found. Because of the vast quantity of fossils that were found in the dry island bone bed, excavation continued all the way until 2008, and by the end, a total of 1,128 Albertosaurus bones have been secured, belonging to a total of 26 different specimens. After this, the dry island bone bed was then known as the largest concentration of large theropod fossils known from the Cretaceous. Albertosaurus sacrophagus itself is a fairly cool looking tyrannosaur. Although it was smaller than the Tavosaurus and Tyrannosaurus, Albertosaurus is nothing to scoff at. The typical adult Albertosaurus measured at 8 to 9 meters in length and weighed between 1.7 to 3 metric tons in body mass, making this an impressive sized theropod. One thing you might have noticed throughout this video is I've called Albertosaurus its regular name Albertosaurus, but also Albertosaurus sacrophagus. If you are somewhat of a fan of dinosaurs, you might know the reason for this. And that's because dinosaur names aren't actually their real names, it's the genus. For example, saying Allosaurus is your favourite is cool, but which Allosaurus do you mean? There's Fragilis, Europus, Chibanseni, and the newer Anax. And you can't say whether all Allosaurus, so they're basically the same species, because if you look at the sizes between Anax and Europus, you can see there's quite a big difference. Now what you might be asking is, is there more than one Albertosaurus? Current moment, there's only one valid Albertosaurus, but in the past there's been a couple others that have wrong for being called Albertosaurus and other Albertosaurus species. The first of these takes us back to the start of the video, with the two skulls from 1892. Both were originally called Lelaps, but after being looked over, it was discovered one of these fossils was from Dryptops, and the other one is from Albertosaurus sacrophagus. The first official species classified as something else, was Dinodon sacrophagus. Dinodon as a whole is a rather dubious genus. This is mainly due to the very few fossils we have of Dinodon, but you might be asking, what happened to Dinodon? Well, later in 1890, it was classified as the juvenile Albertosaurus, along with the many other species of Dinodon being classified as younger tyrannosaurs. Later in 1928, a new species of Dinodon was discovered, being Dinodon actungus, but it was reclassified to a small Albertosaurus known as Albertosaurus Actinungus. But this was only for a short amount of time, because Albertosaurus actinungus was again reclassified and just made into a smaller version of Albertosaurus sacrophagus. But that's enough about fake Albertosaurus, let's get into what the real Albertosaurus was actually like. Like I said earlier, Albertosaurus is 8 to 9 meters in length, it stood at 3.4 meters in height, and its beast weighed a staggering maximum of 3 metric tons. So, all in all, Albertosaurus is a very impressive carnivore but it gets even better in my opinion for Albertosaurus, since it's highly believed Alberta was a pack hunter. The reason behind us thinking this is because of the dry island bone bed. Like I said earlier, there was 26 different Albertosaurus remains in the formation, but what pushes the idea forward that they were pack hunters is that they're all from various ages. One was a very old adult above 25 years of age, eight were adults at seven to 23 years of age, seven sub-adults between 12 and 16, and 6 juveniles between the age of 2 and 11. Because of the large differences in age, it's highly believed this could have been a family pack, similar to what we see in the modern day with wolves. But why would they have done this, you may ask? And that is a good question. In most cases, increasing numbers means you need more resources, like food and water. With greater numbers, it also becomes harder to set up ambushes, since every member has to stay hidden during the hunt. But there are some positives, and the main one is it allows the pack to bring down bigger, larger prey that would provide more food. 
one of these prey items Albertosaurus would have to hunt in packs would be Pachyrhinosaurus. Measuring at 8 meters in length and 4 metric tons, Pachyrhinosaurus was a beast of a dinosaur. Like many of its ceratopsian cousins, it had a thick crest adorning around its head, but unlike its cousins, it had a hard bump on its head instead of horns. Although this may seem silly, having a lump instead of horns, there is a solid reason for this. Horns' main ability is to cut and pierce for attackers' flesh, but they can be fragile at big sizes. But a lump on Pachyrhino's head would work similar to that of a ram's horns, made for blunt force impacts. And when considering its 4 tons of body weight, this impact could do serious damage to an Albertosaurus. As well, Pachyrhino was covered in thick armoured scales on its back and sides, effectively making it a tank. So a lone Albertosaurus would be mad to try and take down this foe alone. Like other Tyrannosaurs, Albertosaurus also specialised in hunting down Hadrosaurs. The unlucky Hadrosaurs there were Montosaurus Tregalis, Sauroophus, and Hypercrosaurus. Although alone, I do think Albertosaurus could bring down these Hadrosaurs due to their size not being too different, but I think it's more likely they're probably hunted in packs for greater success. And to finish the trinity of North American Tyrannosaur prey, we have Ankylosaurs, like Anodontosaurus and the Nodosaur Edmontonia. But in the most likely scenario, I don't believe Albertosaurus would have dared touch these dinos. Just their impressive armoured body, it would make much more sense to go for easier prey like the Pachyrhinosaur and Hadrosaurs. But there is one more important species that live with Albertosaurus that I feel like we should go over, and that's Gorgosaurus. Gorgo was another Tyrannosaur that lived in Cretaceous Alberta at the same time as Albertosaurus. In size, it's pretty much identical to Albertosaurus. At 8 to 9 meters in length and 3 metric tons, put side by side, it's almost impossible to tell them apart. This, I'll be honest, confuses me, since why would two Tyrannosaurs of the same size live in the same area together? It has been suggested that maybe they hunted different prey, with Albertosaurus dealing with large prey in packs, and Gorgos hunting smaller prey. But this makes no sense to me since they're similar size. So if they had different niches, why wouldn't they be different? Like if we go across and look at Asia, we can see large differences in niches. Like look at this for example. Aedilaramus is smaller and nimble, so it most likely hunted smaller prey. But then Tyrannosaurus is big and bulky, so it hunted large game. That makes sense to me. But what doesn't make sense to me is when two dinosaurs of the same size have two completely different niches. Like in my opinion, wouldn't it have made sense for one of them to be a lot skinnier and even to be a lot heavier and bulky? So in my opinion, that means utterly nothing because I have no qualifications on the matter. Albertosaurus and Gorgosaurus are probably the same species because I just can't see them both coexisting together. But this was the brief summary of Albertosaurus, the pack hunting Tyrannosaur. I hope you enjoyed the video and possibly learned something new about this North American Tyrannosaur. Until I see you again, bye bye.